Hey, welcome back to the channel. Today we will be doing a production workload GPU showdown between the EVGA XC3 3080, ASUS TUF 3090, and the Radeon 6900 XT. Now, we've all seen the gaming benchmarks, and we have a pretty good idea of how each of these cards stack up against one another. But what hasn't been talked about much is how they perform in production environments. So I've run benchmarks for Blender, Lightroom, Premiere Pro, and DaVinci Resolve. Now the Blender benchmark that I'm using is just the standard standalone app that you can download at opendata.blender.org, which essentially just runs through a set of pre-made scenes such as BMW, Coro, Classroom, etc. Now, the other software packages are a bit more tricky because there isn't any pre-made benchmarking software that you can download and pull the metrics out of. So essentially what you have to do is set up your own production scenarios and then run through them with each card and keep track of the metrics. Now, luckily for us, there is a company called Puget Systems who has already set up these production scenarios for these software packages and bundled them into a set of applets or plugins of sort. Now, I'll talk more about Puget Systems later in the video, but until then, let's jump into Blender. Now, take note that the Blender benchmarks are measured in seconds, so the lower score is the better score. The first scene I'm gonna show is Coro, and the reason I chose Coro first is because it is the only Blender scene where the 6900 XT beats out the 3090. Now, I'm not necessarily team green nor team red, but I am team underdog, so I was really hoping the 6900 XT would perform well against the 3090. Though it's not by much, if you consider the price to performance between these two cards, it definitely is a win for AMD. Now, you'll see in the next few benchmarks, the 3090 does pull ahead, as one might expect, and the 6900 XT goes to bat against the 3080. Okay, next scene is Barcelona, with the 6900 XT trailing the 3090 and still staying ahead of the 3080. Then we'll jump to the classroom scene, and we see the 6900 XT trailing even further behind the 3090, but also pull further ahead of the 3080. And then in the fishy cat scene, we see the 3080 pulls ahead of the 6900 XT for the first time, with the 3090 still on top. And finally, the BMW scene, where the 6900 XT is left in the dust, giving us an overall score where the 3080 is in last place, the 6900 XT in the number two spot, and the big ol' 3090 taking the lead as expected. However, in my opinion, it just isn't substantial enough of a lead to justify its $500 price premium. Now let's jump over to the Adobe Lightroom benchmarks. And take note that all the remaining numbers I'll be showing are performance metrics. So the higher the score, the better. First up, we have the active score inside of Lightroom. So the active score is essentially benchmarking how long it takes for Lightroom to respond after clicking on a button or a key input. For instance, when you're scrolling through photos, it's testing the latency between processing the arrow key and having the next raw image fully render on screen. And again, as expected, the 3090 is on top with the 6900 XT slightly trailing the 3080. Next, we'll take a look at the passive score, which is essentially anything you can set and forget, such as import, export, photo merge, etc. You'll see these scores are relatively similar, except the 6900 XT is pulling slightly ahead of the 3080. And then the overall score puts the 6900 XT and 3080 neck to neck with the 3090 on top. But for anyone who is only using their GPU for photo editing, I wouldn't recommend the 3090 given its price to performance. It's just more GPU than you need. 
Instead, put those dollars towards a faster CPU as Lightroom is mostly CPU intensive. Okay, next up we'll be looking at video editing and we're gonna start with Adobe Premiere Pro. And the first benchmark is testing the playback performance. Now you'll see here the 6900 XT is falling way behind. And the reason for this is because Premiere Pro is heavily optimized for CUDA, which means the OpenCL algorithms just don't perform as well. So naturally, NVIDIA's GPUs are just simply gonna perform better. So with that said, let's move on to the Premiere Pro export score. Here, we're seeing generally the same performance delta. And then the overall score, putting the 3090 and 3080 neck to neck, and the 6900 XT trailing by a considerable amount. So let's move on to the next video editing suite, DaVinci Resolve. The first benchmark is the 4K media score. And again, we see the 6900 XT lagging behind due to NVIDIA's CUDA optimization. And then we see similar results in the DaVinci Fusion score. And moving on to the overall score, we have the 3090 on top, 3080 in a close second, and the 6900 XT left in the dust. Now, remember how I said I wasn't necessarily team green nor team red, but I am team underdog? Well, I was really hoping I could find a production use case where the 6900 XT would shine. So then I thought I'd build a scenario where I would utilize its 16 gigabytes of VRAM. And from there, I downloaded a bunch of 12-bit 8K60 RED footage and built a DaVinci Resolve project that I could test render on each GPU. I tested the 3090 first, and as expected, it performed just fine, utilizing roughly 14 of the 24 gigabytes of VRAM. Next up, I tested the 3080, and it actually ended up just crashing out of the program. So I tested it another couple times to see if it was just a fluke, but it wasn't, it just kept crashing. So the 3080 just wasn't cutting it, probably due to its uh, limited, and I'm putting limited in quotations here, 10 gigabytes of VRAM. Then next up, I tested the same project on the 6900 XT, and it rendered just fine, utilizing about 14 of the 16 gigabytes. Now, it did render slower than the 3090 uh, by about 30 or 40 percent, but it did render just fine. And there you have it. If you need to render 12-bit 8K 60 red footage and you don't have the budget for a 3090, then 6900 XT should do the job. Now, I do want to give a proper shout out to Puget Systems as I use their free benchmarking software for this video. If you're looking for a custom-built high-performance machine, they really are the go-to company. Check them out. Hope you enjoyed the video. We'll see you next time.